February 3rd, 2020. Joe here at Simple Life Shows. Uh, well, the simplest answers are usually the best. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, do all the good social media stuff to keep the rational voices out in the forefront where they belong. Now, we did a, a few videos here on the uh, the Super Bowl and all that kind of stuff and the feminism and the politicization uh, with the Super Bowl and the 49ers and so forth. I did forget and neglect to mention one uh, glaring detail that I think a lot of people did pick up on as well, that Jay-Z and Beyonce were in attendance and they did not stand during the national anthem. Uh, of course, they I guess they were in protest because they're millionaires in this country has given them so much I mean, uh, who can go around with a face like Jay-Z and make millions and millions, if not billions of dollars, um, and not feel grateful? I just don't understand. Uh, I'll never understand why people and, and why, why we just simply can't understand that it's not about the anthem. It's not about the ideology of this country and what it really stands for. And that is what the, the flag really stands for. It, it stands for the blood that was shed for the freedoms that we do uh, we, we simply take for granted every single day in this country. Um, it, it's, it has a lot of meaning behind it, and a lot of people died for that freedom that you so blatantly just forget about during major sporting events. But I'll digress. It's not a huge deal. I really don't care as much. But I think it's a little hypocritical, though, uh, on Beyonce's part, because back in 2013, if, uh, if, if we take a trip back there, uh, Beyonce was uh let me just actually put this on the uh, the desktop here beyonce uh during that time especially during the inauguration of president uh former president obama back in 2013 uh she was um um uh, alleged lip singing a lot of certain things uh here the washington post reported she broke her silence thursday on the national anthem lip sync contra uh, controversy that has dodged her since the inauguration and she broke that in in style at a news press conference in New Orleans uh, to preview her Super Bowl halftime show, the superstar began with an unusual request to reporters. Would you guys mind standing? And then she sang the national anthem live unaccompanied and loud. Any questions, she asked. Well, I have a question. Why, why, is, it, why is Beyonce re requiring other people to stand when she sings the national anthem? But in, uh, you know, but she decides that she's going to sit down when it's played in 2020. I guess I guess in 2013, we just simply had more freedom back then. Maybe the fact is that she just liked the fact that Obama was president, even though technically we had less freedoms. We had more regulations and we were under more strict control and more surveillance and, and we had a lot more wars going on. Please remember that Obama was bombing the living hell out of the Middle East during this time. He dropped thousands, if not tens of thousands of bombs on the Middle East. And while Beyonce and Jay-Z and the rest are crying over all of the migrants that are losing their home and have to make the voyage here from war-torn areas, please understand that a lot of it did come from the Obama administration. A lot of the money that went towards a lot of the chemical weapons that were used on these children came from this administration as well. So... We have to uh, be a little bit mindful when we're, you know, when we're critical of this administration, which I'm still critical of it, but I was also critical of Obama and, and, and the rest and, and Bush and so forth down the, uh, the line ever since I could vote. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, moving forward here, uh, uh, Ilhan Omar is uh, kind of making news again. She's talking up uh, when she came to this country from uh, Somalia. And what she kind of went through and the videos that she saw in a refugee camp before she came over to this country and how it just did not live up to her idea of the American dream. She says here, uh, uh, Omar continue explains, disappointed moving to the U.S. and seeing homeless people rather than white picket fences. She says here, when I first came to the United States, I remember one of the first things that I saw was homeless people sleeping on the sides of Manhattan when we arrived in New York. And I remember turning to my father and saying, this doesn't look like the America you promised. And my father looked at me and said, hush, child, we are going to get to our America, Omar recounted, because the America we were shown in the orientation tapes when we were coming here from the refugee camps in Kenya, had beautiful homes and white picket fences, happy families eating a full meal in their beautiful living rooms. Uh, it had happy children on the bus to go to their beautiful schools. It had pictures of amazing malls, mega malls, and had pictures of beautifully built bridges and highways. It was a picture of abundance. Now that is ideal. That is the America we all know we deserve, but our reality is full of homeless people. 
A reality is full of families who have moms and dads who are going without dinner or lunch or breakfast just so that they can have enough for their children, she explained. Our reality is full of kids who are showing up to schools that are full of mold and leaking rooftops. Our reality has children who are facing drills every day to learn about how they escape being shot in our schools. I had to pull up this uh, this statistic here from uh, St- uh, Statista.com. It's an estimated number of homeless people in the United States from 2007 to 2019. We see here that the last year there's been a slight uptick. But from 2007 when Obama took over, well, 2000. Eight, I guess, whatever. Um, well, I guess it was 2000. Yeah. So when Obama took over. Uh, all the way to 2016, it's, it remained relatively high. Now, it went down, it went up, went down, it went up, stayed. So, and then uh, we see there was, uh, you know, some, some progress that was made in 2013 into 2015 and 2016. It's remained kind of, kind of the same. You know, it really hasn't really hasn't changed too much. There has been a slight decrease in the amount of homeless people. It had about, I would 647,000 to now 567,000. So a decrease of 100,000 or somewhere between 10 to 15% uh, decrease or you know between 10 and 20% decrease there. So that is actually good news. And that's something that we should applaud not only the Obama administration for in the, the remaining years of his presidency, but also Trump for uh, you know, continuing to work on this pressing issue. Uh, we also, uh, we're also seeing, you know, I don't have the statistic up, but we're also seeing, even though the, you know, the mass shootings and stuff like that, that when they do happen, yes, it is horrible. And we, you know, we we're kind of caught up in the moment and we want to extrapolate a lot of different things from that one isolated event. Of course, these aren't isolated events. They are continuing to happen and some could say at a more rapid pace, but that is just simply not true. Uh, the amount of gun violence from, you know, long rifles and stuff like that. And of course, that is, you know, a, what what is actually people are talking about is the assault weapons, the long rifles and how they are used. That is actually decreasing over time. So we have to kind of look at this through um, eyes that are, you know, that 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 are more focused on the what, whatever is rational and what and we have to really look at the numbers when it comes to this. Ilhan Omar is is trashing America, but she's not really looking at the real numbers. She's not looking at uh, how you know how far we've come over the last decade or more. And uh, I, I think she's painting a very very grim picture of this country. Uh, now, as far as homelessness goes, the vast majority of the homeless people do live in areas that are controlled by you know Democrat leaders. And this is a fact. I mean, we look at New York, we look at San Francisco, we look all, at all of California, honestly, uh, where a lot of the homeless population is. Now, homeless people are all over the place, but, uh, you know, I used to live in Colorado. Colorado is a blue state, and I saw a lot of homeless people. I used to live in Florida and a lot of other predominantly red states. Didn't see a whole lot of that. Now, they were still there, but not in the numbers that we see in these Democratic uh uh, uh, led states. So we need to point the fingers in the right direction um, and not so much in the direction of uh, some sort of uh, boogeyman that's that's hiding under the closet. I mean, I, I, I figured this was going to happen during the Iowa caucus, and it's only going to get worse as we go forward. This whole idea of white supremacy, you know, and all, you know, trying to paint Trump as some sort of uh, white supremacist or misogynist. And we're going to hear a lot more about Hitler and stuff like that. I mean, these things keep coming up and it's just going to get worse as uh, November gets closer. So keep an eye on that. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.